Prepare yourself for an interstellar shocker because, according to a group of scientists, Beetlejuice, that mesmerizing red supergiant adorning Orion's shoulder, has already exploded. Yep, you heard that right. We are not joking. Within the next ten years or a few decades, its brilliant aftermath will illuminate the night sky. But how did scientists come to this claim? Should we be concerned? Could the James Webb Space Telescope capture the remnants of Betelgeuse? Today, we're diving deep into all the latest details. One of the most prominent stars in the night sky in the northern hemisphere during winter is the red supergiant star Betelgeuse. It's among the handful of stars that shine brightly enough for us to actually see its reddish-orange color with the naked eye. Betelgeuse is usually the tenth brightest star in the night sky, but as you may already know, it's always been known to vary in brightness. Part of the reason for this is that Betelgeuse is absolutely not your typical star due to its massive size. If we were somehow able to replace Betelgeuse with our own little sun, it would stretch out all the way to the asteroid belt and have a mass of an astonishing 20 times that of the sun. It may come as a surprise, but Betelgeuse is actually quite young for a star, with an age estimated to be around 8 to 10 million years. In comparison, our own Sun is much older, with an estimated age of about 4.6 billion years. This is because supergiant stars like this burn rapidly through their nuclear fuel and go supernova relatively quickly on geological timescales. This also means they evolve rapidly, and Betelgeuse may actually have done that right before humanity's eyes. To understand how scientists came to the conclusion that Betelgeuse had already exploded, it's crucial to delve into the context. After that, let's delve into all the evidence. Come, my friend, and let me take you on a captivating journey to unravel the enigma of Betelgeuse. The tale begins around the 2nd century BC, where Chinese astronomers made a noteworthy observation that Betelgeuse exhibited a distinct yellow hue. Fast forward to the middle of the 2nd century AD, and the Greco-Roman astronomer Ptolemy described it as orangish or ruddy, the same as it appears today. Similarly, medieval observers in the Middle East witnessed a similar coloration. The question arises about how colors were named or perceived in the past, but in this case, there is a physical possibility that Betelgeuse underwent a color change within a few centuries. It is plausible that Chinese astronomers observed Betelgeuse during its yellow supergiant phase, and over several centuries, it transitioned into the red supergiant phase. Given that humans, by our nature, are night sky watchers, you have to wonder how many people across the globe that could see the star noticed the change but left no records. After all, changes to a star like that probably came with all sorts of dimming and brightening events that aren't recorded. Imagine them pointing up at the night sky and saying, hey, didn't that star used to be brighter? And that is exactly what's been happening right now. Betelgeuse is a variable star, but it seems to conform to some cyclic behavior. Starting in December 2019, Betelgeuse's brightness abnormally dipped by a huge amount, which was visibly noticeable to the naked eye for those used to gazing at this star. It was not its normal self until early 2020. Over time, it recovered, and one theory was that some of these cycles had coincided, making for a particularly deep dip in brightness. However, the observations made by the Hubble Space Telescope indicated something rather peculiar. It appeared that Betelgeuse had expelled an immense amount of scorching material into space, forming an enormous dust cloud. This dust cloud, in turn, obscured a significant portion of the star's light when viewed from our perspective. The transformation was quite astonishing. Betelgeuse, once counted among the ten brightest stars in the night sky, faded to a point where it ranked lower than the twentieth brightest. It was truly perplexing to witness its dimness in comparison to its neighboring star, Aldebaran, which holds the fourteenth position in terms of brightness. Thankfully, Betelgeuse showed signs of improvement, but its unusual behavior did not cease. In fact, it is currently displaying a state even stranger than mere dimming. Over the past few months, Betelgeuse has undergone a dramatic increase in brightness, surpassing its normal luminosity by a staggering 50%. This puzzling situation is quite unsettling for a star that is known for its changes. 
The dimming events could be caused by dust or coinciding cycles, or maybe the star developed huge sunspots. However, a significant increase in brightness is a completely different thing, although it could be related to the previous event. When Betelgeuse expelled material in the event of 2019, it likely caused a substantial disruption in the star's plasma flow. The current behavior we observe could be considered an aftershock of that ejection. But what lies behind this peculiar behavior, surpassing the star's usual variability? One conservative hypothesis that has been extensively debated is that Betelgeuse is nearing the supernova phase. While conservative estimates still suggest that the star is approximately a hundred thousand years away from its supernova event, today, we will provide evidence to question this idea and show that it has already happened. So what is the evidence? According to a groundbreaking recent scientific paper by Hideyuki Seo and colleagues of the Tohoku University in Japan, link in description, Betelgeuse has already undergone a supernova explosion. And we may be witnessing the aftermath of this cosmic spectacle within 10 years or a few decades from now. Yes, that's right. That's amazing as the last observed supernova in our galaxy was Kepler's supernova, which was all the way back in the 1600s. Through a thorough examination of Betelgeuse's variability patterns, the researchers have discovered four distinct periodic changes occurring at intervals of approximately 2200, 420, 230, and 185 days. While the origin of the longest period remains unknown, it is speculated to be the fundamental period, with the shorter intervals potentially serving as overtones. The researchers propose a model suggesting that Betelgeuse is in a late stage of carbon year burning, implying that it may be on the verge of a spectacular explosion, positioning it as a prominent candidate for the next expected supernova event within our Milky Way galaxy. When it comes to unraveling the mystery surrounding Betelgeuse, there's a bit of a puzzle. You see, there are some conflicting observations regarding the ejection of materials and the star's subsequent recovery. The general consensus leans towards a mass ejection event, something not entirely unheard of for various types of stars, although on a smaller scale compared to our own sun. But here's the twist, supernovae are a real thing too. We actually witnessed one in a satellite galaxy of the Milky Way back in 1987. So, while it's possible that our estimates for Betelgeuse's explosion timing could be off, don't go planning a vacation around it just yet. The tricky part is that Betelgeuse is currently tricky to observe. It has slipped behind the sun and won't be visible again until at least August. As a result, we're left in the dark about what this enigmatic star is up to at the moment. What we do know, however, is that it's bucking its usual trends by brightening. Now, here's something fascinating, Betelgeuse's immense size and relatively close proximity, approximately 650 light-years away, allow us to actually resolve a disk when observing it. Most stars are simply too far away, appearing as mere points of light. But with Betelgeuse, we have a rare opportunity to capture direct variations in its light output through photography. So, we not only have a star that could potentially go supernova, but we also have plenty of data to collect, including pictures, even though they may be a bit blurry. Now, let's imagine the scenario where Betelgeuse actually has indeed gone supernova, how would it look like? First things first, it's going to be a real spectacle. But don't worry, it's perfectly safe for us here on Earth. You see, Betelgeuse is actually quite far away, so it won't cause any harm to our planet. When it does go supernova, though, it won't be the brightest object in the sky. Actually, the moon will still outshine it by far, and let's not forget about the sun. However, it would definitely cast its own shadows at night and remain visible during the daytime for about a year. Now, here's the interesting part. The supernova would be visible at night for several years, gradually fading away. There might be a brief period where it regains some of its former brightness, but eventually, it will continue to fade until the familiar shoulder star in the constellation Orion disappears altogether. While this supernova won't pose any danger to us, it could create some confusion for certain creatures. You see, some animals rely on moonlight for navigation, 
and with an additional bright light in the sky casting shadows, it might throw them off their game a bit. But that's not all. Astronomy itself would face some challenges. Why? Observing the night sky from Earth during times when the moon is shining brightly can be a bit tricky. A very bright supernova would only complicate matters further. However, many telescopes would likely be more interested in capturing the supernova's glory than anything else, even if it means adjusting their observations. Plus, there would be some warning signs before the visible explosion, such as detecting neutrinos and gravitational waves, giving astronomers time to prepare their telescopes. Now, let's delve into our next question of whether the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, has actually observed the remnants of Betelgeuse. Be sure to share your thoughts on Betelgeuse's supernova explosion in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to Beyond Discovery. Now let's continue our story. Well, spoiler alert, unfortunately, the Webb Space Telescope has not had the opportunity to take a peek at Betelgeuse. Why? It's all because Betelgeuse is just too darn bright for Webb's liking. You see, JWST was specifically crafted to spot incredibly faint objects in the vastness of space, but if it turned its gaze toward Betelgeuse, the star's blinding brightness would totally overwhelm its detectors. Trust me, that's not a situation we want to encounter. To give you some context, Betelgeuse's infrared K-band magnitude is a whopping minus 4.378, making it about 1,585 times brighter than the saturation limits of JWST's filters. That's like trying to stare at the sun without sunglasses on, it's just not a good idea, my friend. But fear not. While the Webb telescope can't assist us in pinpointing when Betelgeuse is going to go supernova, there are plenty of other observatories eagerly waiting to capture the cosmic spectacle. These observatories, both on the ground and in space, will be armed with various instruments and techniques to unravel the mysteries of the supernova explosion. Just imagine the excitement of witnessing Betelgeuse go supernova in real time. We would have the chance to observe this spectacular event unfolding before our very eyes, collecting a treasure trove of scientific data. Once the supernova dims and disappears, our attention would shift to studying the aftermath. A perfect example is the Crab Nebula, a remnant from a supernova that exploded in the 11th century. Back then, if you had a telescope, you wouldn't have seen the nebula as it appears today. It's still visible, evolving, and expanding from the point of the explosion. Now, what remains after a Type II supernova, like the one Betelgeuse is expected to experience, depends on the amount of material left behind. It could collapse into a neutron star or, if there's enough material, transform into a black hole. Both scenarios are rare, especially considering Betelgeuse's proximity. If it becomes a neutron star, it would be one of the closest to Earth. And if it becomes a black hole, it would hold the title of the closest one for quite some time. However, reaching it would be quite a daunting journey, spanning hundreds of light years. Of course, we can't say for certain that Betelgeuse is on the brink of a supernova. The star's surface doesn't reveal what's happening deep within its core. It's certainly unstable at the moment, but it could return to its normal cycles and remain that way for decades or even centuries, despite being close to a supernova. On the other hand, alternative models suggest that the explosion might not occur for tens of thousands of years. In the end, only time will reveal the true fate of Betelgeuse. This celestial spectacle reminds us that the night sky is ever-changing, and stars are not eternal. While some endure for unimaginable spans of time, the universe constantly evolves on both short and long timescales. So, let's continue to marvel at the wonders of the cosmos and embrace the mysteries that lie within.